In this video, I am going to talk basically about process control and a situation we need to use mathematical models in control applications. So let's start process control with mathematical modeling minds. This is the outline of this video. I will present feedback control, PID controller, advantages and drawbacks of feedback control and an example of feedback control system. Then I talk about feed-forward control, advantages and drawbacks of feed-forward control and an application of feed-forward control. Finally, I will describe how a combination of both feedback and feed-forward control works and give you an example. First, we talk about feedback control. The schematic diagram shows a feedback control loop and it has four main blocks process, sensor, filter and controller. These four blocks connected together we call a control loop or feedback loop. This is a closed loop control and we call it automatic control as well. Number one is the process block. The process is a physical system that needs to be controlled using an actuator. The actuator is also included into the process. Number two is the sensor. The sensor measures the process variable to be controlled. Number three is the filter. This is smoothing out the random noise present in the measurement signal. Number four is the controller. The controller equipment has some sort of program implemented within it. It gives a control signal to the actuator which is connected to the process in order to manipulate the process. The controller uses the control signal U to control the process. The output variable Y is the variable that needs to be controlled within the process. The process disturbances are the non-controlled input variables acting on the process. They influence the output variable of the process. Measured output or the measurement signal is the output from the sensor after measuring the process output variable. The measurement signal contains some noise which is called measurement noise. The filter is a program or a function in the computer that smooths out this random noise in the measurement signal. Otherwise, noise can propagate to the control signal making unnecessary process fluctuations. The set point is the desired output variable and this is also called the reference value. The control error is the difference between the set point and the measured output variable. In order for you to understand the feedback control system much better, I am going to explain it using a simple example. Let's consider our process as a simple home heating process. The output variable or the variable we need to control is the inside temperature of the house. Few disturbances to this process are outside temperature, heat loss from the home and ventilation. We measure the inside temperature using a temperature sensor and correct the measurement using a filter for random noise. The set point is the desired temperature we want to maintain inside the home within our comfort range. The difference between the desired and measured temperatures is the control error and this error term is input to the temperature controller for generating the control signal. Let's assume a hot water heater inside the building. The valve is the actuator in this process which regulates the water flow into the heater. If the control error is negative, the controller reduces the hot water flow to the heater by closing the valve and if the control error is positive, controller increases the hot water flow by opening the valve. PID controller. A PID controller or the proportional integral derivative controller is a control loop mechanism which uses feedback control which is widely used in industrial control systems and a variety of other applications. The controller calculates the error that is the difference between the desired set point and the measured process variable and generates a control signal for correcting the output based on proportional, integral and derivative terms. 
This equation is the mathematical representation of the controller. Kp is the proportional gain, Ti is the integral time and Td is the derivative time. E is the error. Kp, Ki and Kd are all non-negative coefficients for the proportional, integral and derivative terms. The proportional term reacts faster to the changes in control error E and it goes to zero when there is no control error. The integral term calculates the control signal as the time integral of the control error from time equal to zero, that is the start time, to the present time. So this term calculates continuously until the control error becomes zero. This is slow reacting at the beginning because of small error and it needs time to give a significant effect on the control signal. A derivative term itself cannot bring the error to zero. It acts on the rate of change of error, trying to bring this rate to zero. If the control error is increasing, dE over dd is positive and total control signal is increasing by ud. If the control error is decreasing, dE over dd is negative and the total control error is decreased by ud. It is fast but the main problem with derivative control is that it amplifies the random measurement noise and causes large variations in control signal. There are special forms of PID controller which are called P controller and PI controller which represents proportional controller and proportional integral controller. Feedback control, advantages and drawbacks. So what are the advantages of feedback control? This is a widely used control mechanism in industrial applications. It can be implemented with little knowledge of the system and the correction to the output variable is done regardless of the source and the type of disturbance. What are the drawbacks? The main drawback of this method is that it acts when there is an error, that is, the control variable is a function of control error. Control signal cannot be adjusted before the control error is different from zero. For frequent and severe disturbances, process may not settle out with feedback control. And with these drawbacks, Theoretically, feedback control cannot achieve perfect control. Feed forward control. Feed forward control is the solution to the drawbacks present in feedback control. The feed forward control variable has a direct coupling from the set point and the process disturbances. This mechanism is based on the knowledge about the process and that is where the mathematical model of the process comes into action. Feed forward control takes the measurements of the process disturbances. And because of using the mathematical model of the process, the feed forward control system may be difficult to implement as it requires to know all the process inputs of the model at a given time instant. Ideally, feed-forward control could be implemented with a zero control error, but it is not practical to obtain all process variables precisely measured at a given time and also due to the presence of model errors. Therefore, the control error is different from zero. So let's look at what are the advantages and drawbacks of feed-forward control. Advantages Feed forward control takes corrective actions before the process output is deviated from the set point. And this method is theoretically capable of performing perfect control. But it requires more knowledge about the process, for example a process model. And the disturbances must be measured which causes the capital and operational cost to rise. Due to the facts, Feed forward control is typically used in combination with feedback control. This is a block diagram of a feedback plus feed forward control system. Here, while the feed forward control is eliminating the effects of measurable disturbances, feedback control corrects for unmeasurable disturbances and modeling errors. 
and this is an example of applying feedback control on a room heating system. The purpose of the controller is to control the inside temperature of the room to have a comfortable temperature. Cold air is flowing into the room due to ventilation requirements and it causes the inside temperature to go down below the requirements. So what is the feedback control loop is doing here in the system? Measure the inside temperature which is the output or the controlled variable and then take the desired inside temperature as the set point and calculate the difference which is the error. Based on how big the error is, the controller generates a control signal that acts on the heating element of the electrical heater to control the electrical power supply to the heater. This causes increase or decrease in the supplied heat to the room. In order to see how the feed forward control is applied to the same process, we first going to develop a mathematical model for the system. And here is the energy balance equation. E is the total energy of the system. W dot is the rate of workflow and Q dot is the rate of heat flow into the system. Let's make some assumptions to make the model very simple. Assume that system is at steady state so that there is no energy accumulation and mass flow rates into and out of the system are equal. Next we assume that room is well insulated so there is no heat losses to the surroundings. Our third assumption is air is perfectly mixed so that properties of air inside the system is equal to the properties of air flowing out of the system. The energy of the system is only internal energy because there is no significant air velocity. Also put the potential energy term to zero. When it comes to workflow, it is only the flow work which is represented by PV dot in minus PV dot out. And use the two relations H equals U plus PV and DH equals MCP dt to obtain the energy balance in terms of enthalpy. Now use m dot out equal to m dot in due to steady state assumption and T out equal to the temperature inside the room. And I'm going to use Cp of incoming air is equal to Cp of outgoing air. Then I develop the equation for Q dot heater. And this is the steady state energy balance for the room heating system. And how can we use this model in feed forward controller design? So we solve the equation further to obtain Q dot heater is equal to M dot in Cp in times T inside minus T in. Now it is possible to represent Q dot heater as UFF which is the feed forward control signal and is a function of time. T inside is not measured and we replace it with the set point temperature. It is a function of time and is the feed forward from set point. M dot in and T in are the disturbances to the process and they are replaced by UFD1 and UFD2. They represent feed forward from disturbances. And we take the Cp as a constant K. The calculation of the feed forward signal UFF requires the measurement and knowledge of Cp, M dot in, T in and Tsp. So finally we have obtained a feed forward controller function for the given process. But remember that this is a steady state solution. For unsteady conditions, the controller function will be different and complex than the one obtained. And this is a graphical representation of the feed forward control system for the room heating process. Here we do not measure the inside temperature of the building. Instead, we take the desired temperature set point Measure the temperature and flow rate of the air stream coming into the room. 
This schematic diagram represents the situation of having both feedback and feed forward control systems. It provides much better control over the two previous cases. And with this block, I will end this video. If you really like the content, give thumbs up and subscribe for the channel and press the bell icon for new video notifications. Thank you.